All right, we're going to begin the quiz review for 6-4, 6-7. We're going to look at the DRP chart. We're going to change 3 and 8 tenths percent into decimals and ratios. First thing we need to do is write our OR because this is a decimal percent. So we're going to have OR, and this would be 3 and 8 tenths, which simplifies to 3 and 4 fifths percent. Now, we're going to change this to a decimal. The easiest way to change it to a decimal is take the decimal where it is, and we're going to move it two places. So our decimal is going to be decimal, zero, three, eight. To change it to a ratio, we're going to use the decimal, write that as a one in our denominator, and then count how many digits we have. So we have three digits, which would give us three zeros. So that's 1,000, and then we would put 38 on the top. The other way that you can do it is you can also look at place value. The 8 is in the thousands place value, so it's 38 thousandths. And then we're going to simplify that on our calculator to 19 over 50. All right, the next one, 2.75%. Well, first we're going to write that as an or, so we can put 0.75 into the calculator, change that to a fraction. That's going to be 2 and... 75 over 100, oops, make that a 7, 75 over 100, but that also simplifies down to 2 and 3 fourths percent. Now we're going to take that decimal and we're going to move it two places to the left, so we're going to have 0.0275. In order to make it into a ratio, we're going to use the decimal as our one, and then we're going to count our digits. We have four digits, so that would put four zeros underneath, which would give us 10,000. 275 ten thousandths. You can also use the place value. Five is in the ten thousandths place value, so you would read it 275 ten thousandths. We'll, put, put, um, we'll simplify that and that simplifies down to 11 over 400. You can start simplifying by 25 and then work your way down. All right, DRP chart, now we're starting with our ratio. So the ratio simplified would be uh, 2 fiftieths, which would be 1 25th. So our decimal is going to be 0 0.04. And then that's going to, we're going to move our decimal two places to the right to make the percent, so it'll be 4%. So let's go back to the ratio. 4 goes into 4 one time, 4 goes into 25, or 4 goes into 125 times. This is also 400, so that helps us with our decimal. Or you can just do 4 divided by 100 on your calculator and it will give you 0.04. The next one we can do on our calculator, we would plug in 2 divided by 5 is going to give us 0.4 and then we're going to move that decimal two places to the right which is going to give us 40 percent. Alright, find the biggest, so the easiest way to do this one is to change all of them to decimals. So this first one we would find our decimal behind the 32 and we would move it two places. So this is going to be 0.320 we're going to punch 1 divided by 4 into our calculator. We'll get 0 0.250. And then we have our decimal 0 0.325. Now notice that I added the zeros on to those numbers that didn't have three digits behind the decimal because we have to compare it to this decimal. So in order to compare it, they all three need to have three digits. So in looking at this, we're looking for the biggest number. So our biggest number is going to be 0.325. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take 58 and change it to a decimal. So that's going to be 0.58. You can do that on the DRP chart by simply moving your decimal two places to the left. 12 out of 26 means we take 12 and we're going to divide it by 26 on our calculator. And that's going to give us 0.5. 4615 is actually what it comes out to be. And then the other one is going to be 0.8. You can do 4 divided by 5, and it's going to give you 0.8. Now notice, we're looking to see which one has the largest, or which one is the biggest. So 
you're always going to add zeros so that the numbers that you're comparing has have the same number of digits behind the decimal. So you'll notice that it's 5,080, 4,615, or 8,000, which makes four-fifths our biggest. Percent proportion. So percent proportion formula is over of is equal to percent over 100. So my percent, I don't know, so that's going to be x. My of or my total is 58, and my part or my is is 12. So I'm going to go ahead and write is over of is equal to percent over 100. I'm writing my formula first. And now I'm going to substitute in. So it's going to be 12 over 58 is equal to x over 100. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to butterfly. So I'm going to butterfly this one first. So it's going to be 58x is equal to 1,200. Divide by 58. Divide by 58. And we're going to have x is equal to 20.68%. Now, that could also round up to 20.69%, 20.69%. All right, we're going to do percent proportion again. So we're going to go ahead and write our formula, is over of is equal to percent over 100. Okay, 36 is my percent. My of, or my total number, is 98. And the part that I'm looking for, my is, I don't know, so that's going to be x. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in what I know. So it's going to be x over 98 is going to be equal to 36 over 100. So I'm going to go ahead and butterfly, so it's going to be 100x. And 36 times 98 is going to be 3528. I'm going to divide by 100, divide by 100. So x is going to equal 35.28. The next one, percent equation. So the same thing I need to find. My 42 is my percent. My of or my total is 36. And my is or my part that I'm looking for is where it says find. So I'm going to do x is equal to. Now this one I have to remember. Oh, let's not forget to write our formula. Let's start that again. So it's going to be is, is equal to percent, and of course we make it a large obnoxious decimal because we have to change it to a decimal before we can use it, and then multiply it times our of. So our is is x, 0.42, changed my percent to a decimal, and my of is 36. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just simply multiply, so x is equal to 15, Point twelve. All right, we're going to start with our formula again. Is is equal to percent, make it a large obnoxious decimal, and my of. And now I'm going to go up. What percent? I don't know what the percent is, so that's going to be my x. Of, or the total number that I have is 150. And the part that I have is 48. So my is is going to be 48. My percent is x, because I don't know what that is, and my of is 150. Now we have to make sure we show our algebra, so it's going to be 150x is equal to 48. We're going to divide by 150, divide by 150, and we're going to get x is equal to 0.32. Now remember that we're looking for percent, so we have to multiply this times 100 so that we can get x is equal to 32 all right, now we're looking at 26% of 300 people prefer vanilla, and we need to find out how many people prefer vanilla. So we can use either percent proportion or percent equation. Is over of is equal to percent over 100, or we can do is is equal to percent, big obnoxious decimal, times of. I find my percent and my of, which is the total number of people. So my is is the number of people that I'm looking for that like vanilla. So that's going to be my x. So I'm going to have x over 300 is equal to 26 over 100. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to butterfly. 
So this is oh, butterfly, your x first. So it's going to be 100x is equal to 7,800. Divide by 100, divide by 100. So x is going to be 78 people. Make sure you label. Now if you use the percent equation, we're looking for the is. We're going to change it to 0.26 and we're going to multiply it times 300. And when we multiply, we're going to get x is equal to 78 people. Either way works. Okay, here's our interest formula. I stands for interest. P stands for principal. Think of Mr. Gedeke and the check, because that's the amount that you start with. Amount you start with. Rate is for your R, and remember that we have to change that to a decimal, so make a big obnoxious decimal, and then T is time, and that's in terms of years. So we're going to invest $400 at a 4.5% for three years. So our formula is I equals PRT. So our interest is going to equal our principal, which is 400. That's what we started with our rate, which is going to be 0 0.045, because remember we have to take that decimal and move it two places, and then we're going to multiply it times three. So our interest is going to be $54. Now our final balance, go ahead and add this to your notes, the final balance in your account would equal your principal plus your interest. So that would be 400 plus 54. So you'd have $454 in your account. Let's take a look at discount. So discount, we're going to have discount is equal to our percent. And again, it's a big obnoxious decimal times our original price. So the discount here would be 0.40. Again, we're moving the decimal two places to the left times our original price, which is 32. So our discount is going to be 1280. Now, to find the sale price, we take the sale price, which is going to be our original price, minus the discount. So our sale price is going to be 32 minus 1280, and that's going to give us our sale price of 1920 tax and total. So our tax, tax formula is equal to, again, percent, change it to a decimal, times your original price. So our tax rate is 8.25 percent, so we're going to move it two places to the right, sorry, two places to the left, 0 0.0825 times our original price, which is going to be 58. So our tax is going to be 479. We rounded to the nearest penny. And now if we want our total, we need to take our original price and we need to add our tax. So our total is going to be 58 plus our tax, which is 479. So our total for that item is going to be 6279. And that's the review. Remember that for this quiz, you can use any flashcards with formulas. So make sure you have all of your flashcard formulas.